Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 60. We're in the 60s now, guys. That's pretty cool. Uh, this episode is Benjamin Hartley. Now, Benjamin Hartley is a lot of things. First off, awesome. Second off, he was Red 7 in Rogue One. You will know Red 7 because when Jin is giving her speech, talking about, you know, we got to do this, and then Admiral Raddus is, I say we fight. Uh, right next to Jin Erso is an X-Wing pilot with a mustache that rivals Biggs Darklighter. And that mustache is on the face of Benjamin Hartley, uh, who's great. Ben is awesome. Fun fact, Ben actually, before he was uh, an X-Wing pilot in the Rebellion, he was a real pilot in the Royal Navy. That's right. Yeah, this guy went from flying like helicopters and like actual aircraft in the Royal Navy to flying an X-Wing at the Battle of Scarif. He survived. He did survive. Harb Bindley is at the Battle of Yavin. Red 7 is there. Uh, but so cool. Such a cool story. Uh, we talk about him growing up abroad, different countries that he's been to, um, how he got involved in acting, how he uh, founded this company called Military Film Services where he gets uh, uh, actual like military people uh, work in the industry. So it's it's really, really cool. Uh, we, we had to cover the mustache. Let's be honest, guys. You're all thinking it, and uh, I'm a man of the people. So I asked him the, the origin of the mustache, and it was Rogue One. And after Rogue One, he actually went on to become uh, uh, like an aviation advisor for all the, uh, all the starships, which sounds like the coolest job ever. But yeah, we get into all that and a ton of other really cool stuff. So without further ado, here's the interesting podcast, episode number 60, with Benjamin Hartley. Theme song time. I think you're on speaker. Let me try that. Hello. Oh, that's better. Ben, we've made Brian, it. Brian, Brian. We, we did it. Hello. <laughs> At last. Yes. This feels like such an accomplishment. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Even with today's technology, it's, yeah. Dude, the last episode I just recorded on, I think it was Friday, same sort of thing. It's like, none of us really know how this stuff works. We're just, kind of, <laughs> just yeah, trying to figure so, it out. Yeah. Yeah, and we're about to talk about things to do with far off galaxies, and and we we're struggling to get in contact. I know. Well, I mean, that's what happens when there's more than one Benjamin Hartley in the UK. I'm like, I, I, I was just sending requests. That I sent. I no joke. I sent requests probably to like four of them. I was like, I hope this is the right Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! Oh well, you've gained some new Ben friends. That's right. That's right. I have I have a, a deck of Ben now. <laughs> that's, a, that's why I had to do the whole. Red seven, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just of course, yeah, in code. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, how you doing, man? Yeah, very good, thank you. Yeah, very good indeed. Thanks. Good, good. How's your yeah. day going? Yeah, good. Yeah, busy, busy with various bits. Um, uh, I've just been. Um, I'm. We're, we're co-producing a, a, a film, a short film, which has just been done. So nice. I was meeting with the director and another producer just to, uh, yeah, see the next stage of things. Sweet, making moves, making moves. Saw you were on location yeah. last week. Yes, yeah, we, we were down. Um, it was actually for um, something else. We get involved in um, a number of different things. I've got. A, I set up a, a production company with a, a good friend of mine, um, and um, yeah, it's uh, we've got a, a few things on the go. Sure, is, that's how you have to do good. it, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fingers and lots of pies, and and work hard. I think exactly, especially in the entertainment industry, because it's it's all freelance. You know, you got to yeah, go out yeah, and get absolutely. the work yourself, and then keep the ball rolling because it's it's not just going to roll itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right, and it's um it is a matter of um keeping maintaining contacts and and you know doing a doing a good job. You know, it's like a, mm -hmm. a simple but involves hard work. Absolutely. Where were you on location? It looked very nice. Uh, yeah, that's down in Cornwall. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, so I don't know if you know the UK that that well, but it's uh, 
it's kind of uh, equivalent of a, of a west coast of um, the, the states, maybe somewhere sort of further up uh, Oregon coastline type thing. You know, it's kind of windswept and, and, and sea swept, but, uh, but beautiful coastlines. And uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of stuff sh- shot, shots there. I mean, it's kind of similar coastline to um, to Ireland as well. So it did look like you know, Ireland. Yeah, exactly. So it sort of faces the uh, faces the Atlantic, and and there's places in Wales, Cornwall, and Ireland who all that have similar coastlines. Um, so uh, yes, it's it's not as as some might have thought a uh, a Star Wars related thing. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's that's your life now, Ben. <laughs> Every time you do anything, like this, looks like some place an X wing would land. Ben, yeah, <laughs> yeah is it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, but um, the I, I might have uh, in the future some other involvements, but I, uh, I anything obviously anything future can't be talked about. That's until, right. That's right. Until yeah. after the DVD release. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, which uh, yeah makes things difficult for for certain things that you just love to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. So you're definitely from the UK. I'm yes, from the UK, but um, spent a lot of time overseas when I when I grew up. Yeah, do you travel a bunch? Moving family. Uh, yeah, my, my my family lived abroad, so I, we left the UK when I was uh, about six months old. And went to live in Morocco for a couple of uh, three years or so. What? Um, and then uh, in Kenya for just short of five years. Wow. Um, yeah, and then back in the UK for two, and then Mexico for five years. That um, is very far away from the other ones. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then and then uh, to Istanbul, back in the UK again for a couple of years, and then uh, off to Istanbul for. Uh, two years, and then Ankara in Turkey for two years as well. Wow! So. Is it a military family or? No, no, it wasn't actually. No, my dad uh, just liked uh, to travel. Yeah, just yeah, exactly. Just there you travel. go. That and that's then, amazing uh, to get such a worldview yeah. so young. Yeah, and then I joined the navy and saw the world. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're like, I've seen a portion. Let's see the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Man, do you um, have a favorite out of those out of those ones? Uh, good question. They seem so um, vastly different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, do, yeah, and, and do you know what? There's sort of different, different places in different times. Um, sure. Y- if you know what I mean. Firstly, in age, uh, you know, the, the things would mean different things to a, a, a kid at, uh, you know, ten or twelve. But also, places have changed considerably in the last, um, you know, forty. Oh, yeah. How old am I? You know, forty-six odd years. Twenty-seven. Um, um, yeah, and, pla- yeah. <laughs> and places that might have seemed uh, fun and carefree then, might, maybe not so now. You know, so right. But but I've got to admit, you know, the the, the people in Turkey were absolutely just the, the friendliest and most welcoming people you can imagine. Um, Mexico was just full of, uh, you know, as, as people know, you know. Uh, color and flavor and taste and it's like this sort of oh yeah um kaleidoscope of everything you know music and um and and, and kenya just growing up there as a, as a kid was kind of a, as you would imagine sort of a, a magical existence of going off and on safaris in your own sort of battered up sort of uh wagon and um and taking overnight trains to mombasa from from nairobi you know as a yeah, a throwback to years gone by, really, I think. Yeah. Sort of frozen in time, but yeah. That is awesome. I don't think I've ever talked to anyone who's been to Kenya before. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's neat. Yeah, yeah. And, and and my school in Kenya was called Green Gates, and my school in Mexico was called Green Gates. So oh, there's no something way. in that. <laughs> yeah. That's like the, what, the, more you, the more you see, the more you realize people are the same, regardless. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Man. Probably, yeah. So you went, so, uh, yeah, I didn't even think about that, schooling. If you're growing up in different schooling, yeah. how was how is that as far as like different ways people learn, or is there like a core curriculum? Like, how, do um, you, how do you keep up with that? Oh gosh, yeah, good point. Uh, it's um, I mean, there's standardized stuff, I guess, for being international. But I guess what was strange for me was, um, uh, you know, kind of growing up as a 
as a minority as the as the odd sure you're right now if you know what i mean to, to a certain extent as well so that's uh i guess um yeah that was a a, a learning experience for, for for a kid in a different country so sure sure yeah but great experience you absolutely loved it yeah that is awesome and then you said you, you went back to england and i have to bring attention to something you posted on instagram recently you were in a band Let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> the good old days. Yeah, the captains of yesteryear. Yeah, I, I actually did. Um, I played a lot of uh, a lot of music in bands at, at university. So I, uh, well, in fact, from from younger than I was about thirteen or fourteen, I, I learned the drums, and then oh, you're a when everyone was stopping for a cigarette. Yeah, I started as a drummer, and then uh, and then learned guitar whenever like the band stopped playing and you know went off for a cigarette i'd pick up the guitars and just start playing with the guitars there you and go. um yeah yeah and then uh I, I sort of learned guitar and when i went to i did a postgrad in music production and for that i had to learn keyboards basically for for some of the um composing elements so you know it was a prerequisite for joining uh, or getting on the course so i i, I learned um, some basic keyboard stuff and i sort of kept that up so um yeah wow. I, I played a little, little little bit of everything that is awesome one man band yeah. were you in a, were you in multiple bands <laughs> or were you in one that kind of traveled or because i know most musicians uh, any sort of touring they go through a few iterations yeah yeah unfortunately yeah, it was always uh we 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 played some local venues where we 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 travel, but it wasn't. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to have done a, a European tour sort of thing. That would have uh, that, that would have been great. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, it was a matter of just cobbling together the, the kit in the back back of a van and, and always driving. Yeah, driving into the nearest place that would have you and yeah. <laughs> playing to a, a bar, an empty bar. That's yeah. right. That's right. Some guys that yeah, some, some fishermen in a local bar that want to listen to some you know a, a fiddle band, yeah. not a rock band. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, that's the less romantic side of being in a band. It's just loading and unloading equipment. <laughs> then you, yeah, exactly. you play music for like an hour or two, and then it's unloading and loading equipment. Yeah, uh, which is why you. This is why you stop learning the drums or stop playing the drums and yeah. learn the guitar. That's, that's... You start carrying one of those boxes around. You're like, this is percussion. That'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Man, that's that's crazy. You realize you're we're still like. Over the course of your life, we're still like in your very young years, and you've already oh, yeah. traveled the world and been in a band. <laughs> well done. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's funny because I wanted to carry on with uh, with music, and uh, I I was um, just getting jobs basically in recording studios. It was the early stage of what I wanted to, mm. or what I thought I wanted to do, um, and um, and at that stage, I. I I passed the, the the window in the in the street in the in the town where I was, and there was a, a big a picture of like this helicopter in the window, and and you know it looked all exciting, you know the, the pictures, and I just thought, you know, what the hell's that? You know, I hadn't really kind of clicked, and then something triggered me where I was just like uh, in me, just like well, I kind of I'd always wanted to fly, I'd always had this kind of, um, but you know most kids do, and it was kind of triggered early on by by films you know yeah. watching films just thinking god i just have this thing inside me that uh that wants to fly but you know because unless your life goes in a certain direction you know if you unless it kind of uh all the things stack up and line up sure. you know often your life can just go start going in a completely different direction and and as i saw this the the aircraft in the window i just thought maybe you know and, and it happens to be a, a recruiting office like a you know a navy oh nice Royal navy recruiting office i was just like i kind of this is the thing that i wanted to do but hadn't really hadn't done anything about it so i'm going to do something about it and i just went in and said right you know what do i have to do to to learn how to fly one of these things and um without being rude to the the the, the way they recruit they their <laughs> sort of initial reaction is it's 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 too difficult to do that you know there's there's other things that you can do in the navy i was like no 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 i haven't come for anything i've come to the, the flying thing you know yeah, right. <laughs> what do i have to do to the, for that specifically uh-huh. um and and that's when i sort of my life turned you know 90 degrees and and i ended up going down that path 
Man. So you th- those are usually the two sides of the spectrum. You've got like artist musician and then you have military. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <Yes>. well, You're <laughs> right. <laughs> they, yeah. they don't yeah. normally uh, yes. intersect Ben. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When I say ninety degrees, I mean one eighty degrees. I mean, yeah, exactly. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> you meant a different um, scale. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and a different, uh, yeah, a different time. I code everything. Like, sure. So, how was that going um, from like the artist musician life to military? Because I'm, I'm assuming it's the same way over there. There's basic training first. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you go in. I went in as a. So I knew that I was going to in order to fly you, you in the in the royal navy you have to be an officer so i had to um apply to be an officer and go to dartmouth which is like the naval college um but there's the basic you know before you're doing anything sort of flying and, and you know being an officer you, you're learning to just kind of strip away civilian side of you in a, in a way and um and, and you strap heavy packs on your back and you're running around at you know four in the morning and you're ironing t-shirt and socks into little squares and the you know in your drawers in the oh, way, yes. where you're living and you think what the hell am I t- you know what am I, t- what am I doing cutting the like, grass with scissors um, <laughs> how is yeah, this gonna yeah, exactly. help me fly yes yeah. <laughs> yes yeah, yeah, completely um but oddly enough you you realize after the, you know the guys come in sort of midnight and you know you've got a sort of five o'clock run in the morning for how many hours and they're, they're pulling your t-shirts out because they're not square enough and your shoes aren't like polished enough and you they throw those out and you start all over again and, of course and, but after about sort of five weeks you realize you know it's just like geez i can't understand this other guy across the room his his shoes are always okay and uh, and some other guy realized you realize his t-shirts are always well ironed or whatever um and and it slowly clicks it's just like wait a minute if he does all the shoes and I do all the shirts and someone else does all the thing, who's good at the thing. And, 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 you know, there's an element of this kind of teamwork pulling together and you help each other out and you're just it's like, ah, oh, it's to do with teamwork and it's to do with, <laughs> you know, it's, it's beyond, of course they don't care about the shoes. They care about the, the methods and getting there. And so whilst a lot of that training might seem a bit daft to people on the outside, you know, there's, there's a reason, there's always a, a reason behind these things, but absolutely. Um, yeah, so, so basic training done, and then there's all sorts of flying tests that you've got to do to be able to, you know, get through the, the next levels. And um, and luckily, I managed to sort of uh, claw my way through those and and, and end up, you know, doing a flying, flying the Navy. So, Man, how long was it before you, like, were behind the controls of something? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's sort of halfway through the, the, that officer training. You do, you do basically, so you get... Well, I think it's like twelve hours or something where you get to to fly solo, fly circuit solo. So nice. The, uh, yeah, so yeah, it was um, it's, it's quite quick to actually get airborne, and then um, but there's so much of the kind of aeronautical engineering type things and and um, principles of flight, and the physics of it, and then the thing about the radios and radars and engineering side things, and this just. There's a lot more academics than that. Oh, absolutely. Lots of math, too, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, which I'm terrible at. I should, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm out, so I can say how, how bad I was. And how it, it was, yeah, uh, constantly trying to find tricks and ways of kind of getting over these fast calculations, which I'm, I'm pretty dyslexic. So I managed to, like, uh, kind of uh, sure uh, somehow survive a career of being <laughs> terrible at maths and getting through it all so. hey as long as you can take off and land safely the stuff in the middle you know you're fine <laughs> what yeah are... yeah when you say land landing, landings are just controlled crashes so, yeah of uh, course it's... nobody died right so you're fine yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah yeah what uh what what aircraft did you fly <laughs> i flew uh well you train on fixed wing aircraft the uh the grob uh, grobs and fireflies which are very good at for, for things like aerobatics and stuff so they, they you know you do throw the aircraft around quite a lot obviously because you, you don't want you're not going to be pilots who are just going to be uh you know just um flying around on a nice day you need um to, people to kind of uh happy to to push the envelope on on our aircraft so uh mm-hmm. yeah those those are fixed wing are really good for that sort of stuff and you learn a lot about navigation and 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 that kind of thing you do tail chasing and aerobatics and stuff it's great you know great fun and hard work and then um 
I went to fly Sea King helicopters. Nice. And uh, and Merlin helicopters, which I, I guess I think it's the one the um the the, the Air Force Two or the, the the new ones that the president has. To, oh, um, the huge ones, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, big 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 aircraft. So you flew those, and you you fly those off the back of uh, small frigate ships or on aircraft carriers. So, um, sure. Is it like yeah. apples and oranges, different aircrafts, like from a fixed wing plane to like a helicopter, or is there some sort of similarity in piloting them? Yeah, um, there's in the in the way that you navigate and aviate. So in the sense gotcha. that, um, yeah, the, the 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 rules of the air are kind of similar. The the way that you navigate, obviously, I mean, it depends because obviously, you know, things like fast jets, it's it's, it's very different. You know, you you you're kind of up in the air, you know, airways with with other aircraft as well, and helicopters. You're sort of down down flying around tree levels or sea level sort of thing so there's, there's a difference in that way in the in the aircraft sure um and yeah coming off uh off and on ships the I mean, helicopters are fascinating the amazing amazing aircraft and it's uh yeah different different sort of flying really than uh going off on a runway and being up at how many thousand feet but um likewise those you know i think to, to fly uh fast jets i was i'm six foot five so i'm i'm actually too tall for, for six five you are flying, not fitting but, in an um, x-wing <laughs> yeah yeah actually they're pretty, they're pretty big wow <laughs> six five yeah, is I, a very tall for a pilot yeah yeah exactly so um i um i kind of knew that other than the fixed flying for or the fixed wing flying in the initial uh, initial that um you know i'd, I'd uh, not necessarily be flying fast jets because the, the the height but um sure um yeah yeah there's um kind of well the good thing is you could fit in a, a, a falcon or an, an x-wing so I, I, that's really all that matters I, let's be honest yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly I, I took a helicopter that's ride once was for real i yeah. took a helicopter ride once and i didn't realize like when you see them in the air it looks like they're just going like coasting you know, sort of in a straight line. What I hadn't realized yeah. was you're actually yeah. almost like riding gusts. So there's a lot of like, it was a small one, but they're like going up and then kind of down a little bit and then up and down a little bit. I got sick. I'm not yeah. going to lie to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, no, it can. It, it gets pretty pretty bumpy and airy. And, and things like, um, you know, when you're flying in a mountainous area where up and down drops up the side of mountains and down the sides, and, you know, they can have huge impacts on, on, on helicopters. So if you... Yeah, it can get pretty, pretty rough, and and if it's at um, you know night time, or if you're anywhere near a big thunderstorm type clouds, you know these kind of big up and down drafts, it can be uh, pretty hairy. Um, oh man! Yeah, or, or even like alongside ships. I mean, when when you're uh, landing a helicopter on a ship, you have to sort of move across and across the, the wind across the ship itself. You oh, get yeah. all this sort of turbulence, turbulence that comes over the top of the ship and. With it pitching up and down, and the, and the, the the waves and the wind, it can uh, it gets pretty bumpy. It's got to be pretty cool landing something on an aircraft carrier in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's odd. It's odd when you're kind of coming back to where obviously the aircraft carrier should be and where you believe it's going to be. And, <laughs> First, you, you know, have to find it. <laughs> yeah, if there's a tactical element to it where you you know you might not have radars on or lights on for for periods of the flight, and you're coming back to where you 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 predetermine where the ship's going to be and you know if, if it's not there you know you're swimming basically you know yeah. it's like <laughs> you know, it's, there's no there's nothing no about it oh um, man but yeah so at night especially on the small ship so a frigate just has a flight deck on the back mm -hmm. um and you'll uh yeah coming into to land on the back of one of those at, at night time when it's bouncing around you know it's a uh, there's not a great deal to see in terms of visual references. So there's a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of the training comes in there as you hovering just 50 feet over the, over the sea at night time. You know, sure. Like, sure. Do you have a favorite uh, thing that you piloted? Uh, I guess, I guess the, the, the Merlins on, on the, um, small mind you on the, on the big ships, like with the carrier, you, you can imagine there's lots of sort of groups of the pilots and their own aircraft and you stick together in squadrons and it's all, you know, there's a lot of, uh, Obviously, there's a lot of work, uh -huh. but um, you know, there's a fun camaraderie side of things, which is which is great. 
Yeah, a lifetime ago, though. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> so cool, though. That's something that, like, not. I mean, given uh, just the law of averages, not a lot of people have had these kinds of experiences. So that's pretty neat. That's pretty yeah, neat. It's, yeah, it's a good point. Actually. Yeah, it's well well put. I guess that, that's right. You, you, you can tend to certainly not com- get complacent. You'd never get complacent. With, yeah. that, with that sort of um, experience, but uh, yeah, you you forget that it's uh, un you know unusual for, yeah. for someone else. To... <laughs> true, yeah. true, pretty neat, pretty neat. And then, uh, so you're in the military for how long? So I was in for sixteen years. I was wow, um, yeah, fl- flying for about ten, ten or eleven of them, and then I left. In I finished my commission, so I. T- signed up for a certain period of time uh-huh. and once you once that went you know I, you either can extend that and have a, a full career but I was it was always my intention to kind of do you know do my time I finish my commission and then um, go off and, and do something else so gotcha, gotcha. I, I, I'm just trying to I've always thought I want to try and squeeze as many lifetimes in as I possibly can and that's um, the way to go I'm, I'm, you don't yeah, you don't want to be at I the end like and I'm, be like I wish I did more <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of packing it full of as many things as I can, which is, uh, which is so far, so far working out. But yeah, um, I would yeah, say so. so. You're doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> travel the world at a young age, and then you're like, mm, I'm gonna learn music, and not just music, all of it. And then just randomly, <laughs> you know, I've always wanted to fly, so I'm gonna go do that now. <laughs> and then, so how did you yeah. get? How did you get into acting and stuff like that? Um. Well, the my kind of interest has been um, in in film. I've always loved film. It's you know that that creative spark. If you've got sort of a creative element about you, whether it be writing or music making or filmmaking, um, and I'd always had that. And, and um, early on in the navy, I, I'd met, I met a colleague, a guy called Henry Davis, who's a who's a very t- very talented director, mm-hmm. um, writer, and and we we clicked and we we. In fact, that band photo, the lead singer, is is Henry Davis himself. Oh, right on. Uh, yeah, it was pre- yeah. So that was pre that that, that band was actually um, whilst I was uh, whilst I was serving. So the 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 my heavy metal bands of uh, of university days and my indie bands of university days. But but yeah. So Henry and I, we always talked about um, films and writing scripts, and we um, we co-produced a. a, a the horror film, you know, as, as you do in your, in your spare time. Of course. And then went on to um, co-produce another. Uh, when when Henry left the Navy, also he wanted to go into film sort of things, and, and we made a, uh, a film called Tink's Kitchen, which was a, a sort of mockumentary thing, a feature length. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, which was which was great. But you know, it obviously sowed the seeds. You know, we were doing everything the production side of it. I was working the camera. So I was doing the DOP work. He was um, uh, directing it, and, and um, yeah, and I should have said at university I'd done some, and, and at school I'd done acting as you do through drama, and you right. know, you're trying to get into theatre productions. And so I'd, I'd, I'd had that anyway, but it, yeah, the seeds were sown working with with Henry very much. And when I uh, left, the, in fact, while I was still in the navy, in my last um, year basically, there was. Um, uh, another very good friend of mine, Andrew Buckley, who's a now location manager. He was a uh, a Royal Marine, and we had worked together. Um, he left, became a location manager, and I I had a call from him whilst I was still serving, and he wanted some uh, some help trying to get a, an asset for a film, uh, mm-hmm. basically a, a ship. Oh, nice! Because <laughs> <And so, laughs> you get a bunch. I, <laughs> Yeah, so so together we sort of uh, helped uh, get a get a, a a ship, which initially he was trying to get an aircraft carrier, um, and one thing led to another. We managed to get a yeah, <laughs> a, a, sh- a ship, and um, the, the film was uh, World War Z. Oh, um, nice. I ended up yeah, so I ended up being um, the an aviation advisor. So to start with, I was helping to organise some of the deck work, and in the end. Um, I was kind of given the the reins of the, well, I was given a, a megaphone and and told to sort out all of the flying scenes on the, nice. on the deck. So where the aircraft were, we're going to the CG aircraft were going to land and take off, and where the people were going to go. And so, I advised the director about what he wanted 
wanted uh, Mark Force to, you know, from, from the deck scenes, which is quite complicated and complex, really. Oh, yeah, with that many um, people. But too. yeah, so my. my Oh, yeah, there were hundreds and hundreds of extras on set. And obviously, you, you know, you got got um, Brad Pitt and Matthew Fox. And, you know, it's a big, um, big, uh, big production. So, um, um, yeah, so that was my first, my first sort of taste of, of the film industry was you know, sort of in the deck Brad scene for, for World War Z. <laughs> so, Sheesh. I mean, um, head, anyway. head first. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. And and on on... on on the deck, um, you know, Andy and I talked about some of the guys. You know, you get people in the background with with weapons and guns and stuff, or or dressed up as soldiers. You know, a lot of films they have extras that are just a student, or it's a plumber or a builder, and he's staying part time and for a bit of fun, that sort of thing. Right. Um, and we kind of said, look, you know, we we know people who do this for real. You know, if, if you want it to look good, you know, we can get some guys, um, some real Marines or. or you know, soldiers or whatever to, to, sure. to, to play these parts. Um, and, um, and so we, we kind of pulled that together and they were really pleased with it. And after that production ended, we had a phone call from an assistant director saying, we've heard, you know, you did a great job on that. Can you help out with something else? Um, nice. And we're like, yeah, sure. You know, what's the project? And they're like, oh, it's a Tom Cruise film called um, Edge of Tomorrow. So, what you worked on Edge of Tomorrow? <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so we um, we we kind of officially formed a company and helped um, put you know military some of the guys and the exoskeletons and stuff. You know, put those into, yeah. the, into the film. So, so what? yeah, so I, I yeah, so the first film was a was a sort of Brad Pitt film, and the next film was a Tom Cruise film. So it's like. I mean, if you're going to do it, do it right, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Um, Yeah. I didn't know that. I knew you worked on World War Z. I did not know you worked on Edge of Tomorrow. That movie is awesome. It's like Groundhog Day sci-fi. It's great. It's a great film. And, you know, it kind of flew under the radar. Yeah. um, How weird is that? Yeah. It it had um, multiple multiple names. I think it was initially it was going to be All You Need Is Kill, and then it was Dire Pete. But it had Edge of Tomorrow on there, you know. It's just like, what, what's the, right. what, what's the, t- what do we what, call you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is the film? And 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 when the sort of titles, um, the I repeat and Edge of Tomorrow on the on the on the posters and stuff, it's sort of. Uh, I wonder whether you know, small things like that might have affected the the initial, you know, yeah, marketing maybe. of it and people's perceptions of it. But it's a f- just fantastic film. I, I I love it. It is. I agree. I totally agree. So, yeah. you're, so I'm sure your officer training came in handy when you're having to delegate all of these people. Did you did you have the same job on World War Z as you did in Edge of Tomorrow? Just kind of correlating. No, it, it, by that point it was um, because we'd set up a, a, a company like a casting agency essentially uh-huh. to help supply. It was called Military Film Services, and and it was just to do exactly that. Anyone that needed any help with kind of military people or assets or equipment you know we were setting ourselves up to to, to help out on on any films that needed us um That's and um well yeah i mean we could there wasn't really anything or anyone doing that at the time and, yeah and for sure it, it 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 um it came out of you know you see an opportunity and you and you seize it for and sure. i think that's kind of um kind of what we did really man you did it well that's so smart especially because a lot of people like i'm sure over there as over here once vets get out of the military, sometimes they have a hard time figuring out what they want to do next. And the fact that you're like, how about you do what you did before, but pretend for movies? Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah totally. So, yeah, there's there's a few, you know, there's a few reasons why it's good. A, that, you know, people leaving the military, they might sort of a bit of extra work whilst they're retraining or resettling, as we call it, into another, um, you know, into another area. And it gives people something to do. But, uh, you know, it's a... Uh, there are these skills that are there and it's just like, great, you know, you've had all these skills over the years and, you know, put it into, which just, some people do it for just fun, you know, and other people do it because they, um, there, there are people actually, a full job is, sure. is doing is supporting artists role. So yeah, we, we filled a book, I don't know, maybe created a bit of a niche and then filled it. Um, That's awesome. But um, yeah, so we we're, we've been involved in a lot of um, in a lot of projects over the um, I guess we did a lot of 
um, helping out on Kingsman on the both so Kingsman films. So good. Yeah, you know, and they're great. You know, great fun movies. Incre- aren't they? That first one, like every now and then, you'll find a movie that like you didn't know you wanted until you saw it. Yeah, and Kingsman yeah, was well, one of those. Well yeah, you're absolutely right. You're to- totally right. It's you know there was at the time I think um, Lockstock felt like that. You know where yes. uh, it just kind of uh, whether it was just the right time for it and Peter. Yeah, there's that that kind of um, gangster movie thing with flair and stuff, and you know, there's violence and swearing. It's just like what this is kind of this is great. I've read this exactly. This really like this. And obviously, um, you know, any movie that. Quentin Tarantino started as the same way. It's like, whoa, this is genre busting. <laughs> How did you make um, but, art um, and use the F word everywhere? Nice. <laughs> Tarantino. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I'm with you. Yeah. I love about Kingsman um, is like, it's one of those, uh, it doesn't apologize for what it is. You're like, yeah, that's yeah. a woman who has sword legs. Why not? You're like, yeah. you're right. Yeah, Why totally. not? <laughs> yeah. T- you know, talented writer and director and um, yeah, you know, we beautiful. Very very lucky to get involved and so a lot of the um the arctic um the guys in the arctic gear and the army the, the private army guys they're they're all from our room from film services and that is know. great good on you yeah. for that that's a that is a great idea and it's it's a it's a lot of work on your part i'm sure because you're running it but then you're also getting other people work which is awesome that's yeah yes yeah, totally. and of course it, it means you can kind of uh you know you, you are involved in the films and you get to yeah. Go on sets and meet the various people and, and gain experience and, and film that way. But um, yeah, so, so that was good. Absolutely. Now I have to ask, when did when did the mustache start? Because it is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> we had to get here, Ben. You know we did. Yeah. <laughs> the real reason well, I had I'm, you on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to get a, like this plaster cast of it, and then I'm going to um, make models. There you go. Insure it. And, yeah. Insure. <laughs> um, I mean, it actually started, it, it, it was because of Rogue One. Perfect. Um, yeah, so uh, the, um, you know, the, the the feeling of the film they, they wanted, you know, it was mine. To, I'd started to get kind of back into acting side of things and, and you know, very much just for, for, for fun because I, you know, enjoy it. I enjoy that that side of things, that creative uh, aspect of it. So I I kind of wanted to, to get involved um, anyway, but we... We started on Rogue One, or I did as as the aviation advisor um, for, for that, um, and um, and also we that we got asked totally separately um, if we could help out with getting some actual aircrew into the um, you know to help on 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 the film as well. So uh, it's a sort of a three pronged attack. Um, yeah, it's your moment. Yeah, yeah, exactly on that, and it yeah it fitted everything for the films we've done and my my experience as well, both in you know film, the aviation side, um, and interestingly with with the sort of aviation, I'm calling it aviation, but you know obviously with spacecraft, yeah. um, the, the, a lot of the the the, the ships, they, I mean they 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 fly, you know obviously for for space it's always been that. The space ships and they act like ships. So it's, essentially, it's a navy. It's a fleet. Sure. Um, there's a the captains and admirals, and you know, even the way that the squadrons are formed, and you know, it's all very, very similar. I mean, it's just built on the, the actual sort of naval flying and and, um, and that side of thing. So, um, you know, that 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 is a, a special fit as well. But um, also, just in the ways that a lot of the aircraft fly, uh, sort of, sorry, spaceships fly, uh, they have the same sort of flying characteristics as as um as this helicopters when they're kind of flying flying at slow speeds and stuff uh-huh. um and there's lots you know where you you're taking off and moving if you've got a rotor disc and you're moving forwards in certain ways and so there's loads of uh, of the ships that fly a, a bit like um helicopters which was interesting you know i sort of found that out um when, when we were kind of looking at all the different spaceships and, and that side of things and um the, the control layouts and stuff like that again yeah so it's it was interesting that is awesome so you started mm-hmm. so the your involvement in rogue one started with you casting for it and then you're like wait i fit this role and then you grow a mustache well if, yeah well for you, <laughs> yeah, not too far off that i mean I, i'd um i'd already kind of uh helped get a bunch of guys because also the ground crew i mean people won't realize because there wasn't too much of the oven base in the or the exterior scenes 
um, in the film. Right. But there was quite a lot shot where there were, you know, lots of ground crew involved and coming up to X wings and and outside on the on the on the pan, basically on the um, on the sort of tarmac outside Yavin and that's and that side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and they they wanted the real realism in the way that people were preparing to get in their aircraft and do this or then their ships, spaceships sure. and do that stuff. So yeah, a lot of the ground crew, uh, the tech staff, the, the pilots, um, I was having to try and get actual, you know, Navy colleagues as well involved. Um, and at that point I hadn't kind of necessarily considered myself to, to stupidly. Um, <laughs> but there was a point I was just like, wait a second. I've never, I haven't kind of put myself, I haven't cast, I should say cast myself in anything. Um, <laughs> but, um, the assistant director at the time had kind of was a bit like, yeah, and you're you're doing this as well, right? Sort of thing. <laughs> right. Like, yes, yeah, so it was a. But at that stage, there wasn't there wasn't a character. You know, this would have just been um, sort of straight in the background. Um, and anyway, for the, in terms of the, the look and feel of it, they always they knew they wanted to look like the original film. So there was going to be a lot of seventies hair and facial hair and this side of things, you know, so of course. they were treating it all, almost like a, a period piece, you know, like it was set in the 70s. Right. Um, not in the 70s, obviously, that's the, just the style of th- that part of the galaxy. Right, <laughs> You know, right. it's that long hair and moustaches and everything else. So when we were there originally, you know, hair and makeup, when we went in for the for the fitting, essentially costume fitting, we were all told, you, you know, just don't cut anything, hair or, or beards or... Um, and they'd kind of look at you and say, no, they'd shave it off and they'd cut short hair. Next one, they'd go on and just like hold their finger up to see what it would look like if you had a moustache. Or, <laughs> uh, and one of them like said, no, I think, okay, wait a sec. They get the buzzer out and they left the tash. They're like, yep, definitely. We've got a moustache here. You know, it's just like <laughs> they'd, they'd obviously realized they needed <laughs> so many people with a tash. So, um, yeah, that's so why I went back and my wife, you know, I suddenly appeared through the door with this kind of uh, attempt at a mustache. And, uh, uh, yeah, she was a bit like, oh, hello. She, she, I think she felt like there was a sort of a, you know, a, 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 a new man had just walked into her life. So it, That's right. uh, it, 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 it stayed for the filming and then stayed afterwards. But There you go. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, it was, it was good. And so I was working some of the time, obviously, just with the supporting artist side and then the other bit, I was also uh, um, giving advice to Jago, Luna and um, Felicity and whoever else might have been in the, uh, in the, in the cockpit or cockpits um, with Alan as well, you know, just talking about the basics of how you fly and then um, with John Schwartz, who's the associate producer and on, on, he was in charge of a lot of the flying sequence scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so it's just making sure that, you know, the, the directors and the actors are all happy with, with what's asked of them. Sure. Um, that's so cool. Yeah. And then, yeah. The, and at some point they did ask on set who had acting experience. And there's a number of people who, uh, you know, who put their hands up and, um, we um we did some uh, sort of auditions reading lines on set um and then some some stuff shot in in, in one of the cockpits oh um, nice you got in a cockpit oh yeah 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 got got, got filmed with doing some dialogue bits in the, in the cockpit with um Dude. a couple of colleagues and yeah it was great at that point um you know i then realized that there was something going on as i got um photograph separately and and you do body scans and things um, mm-hmm. you know as you'd imagine for, for, for you know the, the the various uses that they might get from people that are going to end up being characters in this thing so, sure man so were you um, there for the entire shoot um no i did we, we did a lot um at uh it was basically anything with the aviation side of things so gotcha gotcha there's a lot of shots at cardington hangers where um, where the Yavin base was, and, and that was probably the most amazing walking onto a film set that oh, I, I can't imagine have had and will ever have. Um, you know, coupled maybe with with walking into the Falcon, but on on solo. On, yeah, uh, yeah. When you when you you're in your, you know, you're in the the, the flight suit. You're dressed as an X wing pilot. Oh, and that stuff you, dreams are made of. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard to even just I'm um, thinking about it now. You know, you 
yeah, I'm a fan of the film uh, or film films. I've, I've, yeah. I always have been since I was a kid, and you know, and you just you're hearing this stuff, and you feel like you're part of the Red Squadron, and you start almost like talking to the other pilots and the and the the tech crew crewy guys all just kind of clump together, and they start talking together, and you're all you know already forming these, even though you know someone you know might be isn't one of the Red Squadron guys or someone else, you know, you, you fall into these groups and it's just like you, you just start to automatically kind of live that bit. And then when we actually walked into the oven itself, or the, you know, inside the, 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 the where they built the, the whole set. Yeah. It was yeah. just phenomenal. I mean, they, they built everything, you know, it's not, it's no, no green screens all over the place. You know, they had, two full-size X-Wings in there and the, the walls, the base walls that have got this kind of green algae thing on went up like way up to the top. So it's like, even if the camera was never going to see that, it was just as genuine. You'd have to go right up and it's just like, this is rock. This is just, these are the walls of the Yavin base. You know, it's like, wow. um, but you know, that's, um, you know, that's, Sure. That, sure. Um, you know they, they they care about it that much that it's the, the you know making it absolutely as real as it possibly could be that's so cool did you get to pick to to be an x-wing pilot or were they like you get this you get this was it like assigned to you or did you have any say um initially i'm just trying to think no initially it, that was they had picked what we were going to be now i knew that there were the blue squadron guys and and yep. the red squadron guys um, but I had been picked as a Red Squadron guy. It's the mustache. So, yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I, I kind of uh, knew from the outset that that's what I was going to be be doing. Right. Um, but, um, yeah, and then I, I was I was quite kind of heavily used in bits. I mean, obviously, at, at various points, they know who is going to be used kind of as a character more so and so there were quite a few scenes that were shot um where you're, you're quite up front and center and interacting with the um the, the the cast the leads um you know and a lot of it doesn't necessarily make it into the movie but right. it, it was obvious that there was going to be you know, you know that my, my my character was going to be part of the the you know the actual squadron and be a be a be a person i guess yeah I'd say, I'd say um, so. You, you See, every now and then you'll find someone who has such a great shot in the movie, and the fact that you're, like, in, in the, the almost the climax speech of the movie with Jin, you're right there looking very concerned, and you're in yeah. orange, so it's like you're double yeah, there. Yeah, like, <laughs> Everything's yeah, like, kind of yeah. dark, and you're just there. I'm like, when I described, when I talked to people, I'm like, oh, you know Red 7, the guy is at the speech, like, the guy with the mustache? I was like, yes, that's the guy. <laughs> It's yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. I mean, it is. It's very prominent. And then, then there were other. It was like in the trailer. They, um, we were running past out to the, the the ships. There was a one of the initial first trailer teasers that were released. Uh-huh. There's um, um, uh, Diego and Felicia walking out. You know, um, out of the the hangar. Oh yeah. And we run past. Their alarms going off, and there's clearly stuff going on. And um, and again, they they wanted us running right past them, you know, up close. Um, and, and yeah, that first clip when it was released, the first teaser, because you know you d- you never know what's going to end up in the film, however right. much you're in it. You know, even you know even paid cast members oh, yeah. um, might not be in the film. So when the first teaser came out, and the first bit of there's this alarm that whoop, whoop, sort of thing, and then I was just like running past and putting my helmet on to go, obviously scrambling out to get in one of the X wings. It's just like, and you know, I'm 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 definitely in the movie because there's me like right, running, <laughs> I've made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah running past and um, uh, but you know, clearly we'd shot lots of other bits as well. So, um, you know, I knew that my um my guy. But at that point, we didn't know what our character names were going to be. Sure. Um, those of us that were, you know, that knew that we were the characters, um, because I guess that's something that they do, um. Yeah, you know, subsequently. Dictionary. Yeah, 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 exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, yeah, Pablo and the uh, Pablo Hidalgo and, and the rest of the guys, who, guys and girls who kind of 
care so much for the story and, and, and steer who the characters are and where they fit in the universe. You know, they, they, they had their, their, their ideas and plans. They did, and they had a good plan for your character because mm-hmm. uh, not they, only they a... was Red Seven, played by Benjamin Hartley, but his real name is uh, sort of an anagram. Harb Bindi. Yeah, indeed. How cool is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, you know a lot of the characters do have this kind of, they, they had, had always wanted to use that for that kind of anagram way of putting some of the cast guys in there. To, yeah. Which was, uh, which was interesting. And yeah, but my, mine's definitely, you can definitely hear it. Yeah. <laughs> so, for sure. <laughs> so I love, yeah. You're and, like um, double in uh, Star Wars history now. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, the greatest thing, obviously when, when the book, so obviously we shot the film and, and, you know, it'd be great. Cause in one guys I'd be like out of my, um, the flight suit and in my casual clothes working as an advisor with cast and you know with the director and then you know in other parts of the days you know I was back in my flight suit actually in the in the film so I had this kind of great double whammy experience of being involved on on both sides of the camera in a way um, but um, yeah the, the the kind of great thing was obviously when when the book came out and it was just uh, 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 you know there you are you've got a bit of a backstory already. Um, and then you know onto the w- Wikipedia, and you're suddenly thinking, wait a second, that's that's my character next to Luke Skywalker in you know in the yeah Yavin battle. It's like so. Then I survived Scarif. Of course, I knew I survived Scarif. Of course. Um, so by surviving Scarif and going back, I, I've got to you know it's not long before we're getting back in the X wings to go off with Luke Skywalker and, and take the Death Star down. God, that's um, so cool. And and seeing, yes, yeah, so seeing that, like, um, you just think, okay, I'm, I've been so lucky, so lucky to be involved in such a great movie. And Rogue One is just a terrific Star Wars Phenomenal. film. Phenomenal. Um, yeah, and so to, to, to have been involved in in what was clearly going to be a great film because Gareth cared so much about it, and you know, made by a fan. Of course. Um, uh, that um, you know. You, an amazing experience. but you know to, to non-fans it might not mean that much but to know that suddenly my character was written into the original film that i fell in love with right from the very beginning it's right. like that's too crazy i mean we know i know i didn't fly with luke skywalker but my, my character <laughs> <laughs> that's right according in universe yeah, you did <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah so you know then you see your name there in in red scrolls and there's like you know wedge and tillies and the like big start lighter there's luke skywalker there's harbin lee there's what's like what yeah <laughs> so um yeah with i um uh with uh gary hagan i had uh, i met him at um at a an event like a star wars event yes and, yes. and we got to talking through that the two you know we, we were just talking about the different films and then kind of realizing Hey, we we flew together you know in this stuff that's right fellow mustache enthusiast <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly yeah um that's but, so um, cool and yeah, then you so did was, so well that yeah. they 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 brought you back for another great star wars movie you worked on solo yeah yeah so so i mean so, you know that that are uh, i kind of um well, you know i was asked to go back i think uh that they appreciated the fact of someone being there who understands not just elements of flying but all so the Star Wars universe itself, right? Um, to, to help with the flying, the you know the flying sequences and, and scenes, and um, uh, yeah, so I was, you know, really lucky to be involved in that. That's so cool. And you got to. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming you definitely walked on the Falcon, right? Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. What was it like? Of, Talk to me. Yeah, Talk to me, Ben. Uh, well, you know, obviously, you know, the film's still out and doing the the rounds. So uh, yeah, of course, you know, no, really no went, super. Uh, don't get too deep do, yeah yeah without any yeah yeah without being too deep obviously the um you know f- first thing i say is the um you know again the the, the attention to detail and the care from you know the, the production side mm-hmm. from um from ron howard from alden himself who's just so great to work with he was just really keen to just you know understand the character understand the the cockpit he wanted to to kind of be the, the the best pilot he could be in all the flying sequences and and so we you know we'd spend time talking about the different um you know elements that might be 
being shot or what was required for the scene sure. um, and go through them. And, um, you know, again, with the visual effects supervisor, um, Rob Bredder, who's um, a, a amazing guy, you know, really so talented, or the whole team are, um, ILM team are. Um, but, um, yeah, the... Uh, kind of pull all those parts together to, to to have that much care and attention on all the flying scenes and the cockpit scenes you know it, it was clear from the outs that they just wanted it to be you know all of it as as realistic as possible and, uh, and they, they, they shot it like that but in answer to your question mm-hmm. uh, you know walking onto the the or into the, the cockpit with with Chewbacca on one side and, and Han on the other side and oh. you know you it, I, and this thing is just real. I mean, it's just built. It's you're you're just there. <laughs> I you know, I can't say anything else other than the fact that it just it, it couldn't be more real, as though you were just in the thing. So, but that's again the Star Wars way in the detail. You know, making just they can't leave any stone unturned. They just want to make it as as uh, as good and as realistic as they possibly can. And yeah, and it was. Just, just, it was amazing. It was amazing. That's so, so, so anyone, anyone there who, who loves and cares about the, you know, the, 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 the Star Wars universe, they, they, they all, you know, from, from anyone you work with in there, they just love and care about it as much as any, any fan does. It's yeah, absolutely. Great. I yeah, love, just... I love how much thought goes into this stuff. Like, uh, down to the little details in the way that things are done. Like, for instance, this episode will come out in a couple of weeks. And just yesterday, I recorded with our Katie Cartwheel. And, oh, uh, really? I did. We, oh, did right. we did a whole like hour yesterday breaking down Rio and like yeah, how he was shot. I worked, like, I worked a lot with, with Casey. Yeah, yeah, how great is she? Yeah, yeah, really She's so good. cool. And just yeah, the idea, yeah. she talked about the different bars in the AT hauler and how she would switch seats and how she, with the, with the Rio costume, like the shoulder joints for the extra arms were still there. And piloting yeah. that, and I was like, piloting. Hmm. I wonder if Ben was involved here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, we worked um, quite a lot on those uh, scenes. A to to actually work out what the you know the switches and levers and and the flying controls for you know because there's elements there where they they've obviously got the the cables going up and down. You know, I won't say anything that'll spoil it for anyone else who's not seeing it. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah, you know, zero spoilers. But you know, there's. There's, there's various elements that go on inside that craft and, and both uh, Rio and, and Alden have to be doing various things in there. Um, and um, yeah, and it's, uh, it, it was, it was great. So we had to work out how to swing, to do what for a reason and purposes to make levers and buttons and switches, and, you know, and the reason why you, you have to care about all of those bits as well as the fact that, you know, it gives the actors so much to actually go on when they're in this environment and they are, you know, they're, they're in the roles and in the characters delivering lines. You know, when you're, when you're just randomly pushing or pressing something, you know, there's, there's not, it, it sort of, it doesn't detract from the performance because these guys are all amazing actors. Right. But to be able to know that, you know, as you're, as you're leaving a, you know, you're leaving an atmosphere to go off into deep space. You know, you might have to be putting off short range sensors that, and putting on long range sensors that have, um, you know, that might put out loads of energy, but might be dangerous. So you can't have them on in the base. And, but as soon as you leave, you've got to whack, you know, you're making that switch for a reason. Right. Um, and, 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 and he knows that this is the comms panel and we make sure that this is the comms panel that is, you know, relevant and, you know, to the other films and things that have been used and switched in, in, in other films, there's a reason and a purpose behind it. So, you know, for any, again, for any fan who's, who, who wants to know more about the kind of cockpits and the way that they, that, that we, we treat them, you know, this is like a, it's all there so that he's making these things for a, a, a reason, you know? Right. Um, and, um, you know, and that, that helps, I think it helps, performances and it helps the realism of, of the um the, the the films i agree i think that's super cool and the fact that you're there and that you are an actual pilot and you did this for so long it reminds me of like speaking of pablo hidalgo with the story group you know they're there to kind of help this be as deep as possible and the detail to go as deep as possible 
and you're like the story group of aviation because you're like, hold on a second, the long range sensors, we got this, we're gonna need a panel here. It's so cool. Yeah, yeah, and 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 um, yeah, it it, it matters because you know obviously there are there are things with with cockpits you know it'll go through refits and so of course. someone might say oh with well, some of the someone they hit that button there on this film and and yet they're doing it something slightly differently but you know we will have covered that for you know reason the panel looks slightly different you know it's it, they go through upgrades and and uh, and that that would be not that's normal that's how it works you know complete refits and you see the the external parts of the falcon with you know it's got different panels on and some have gone and and um, you know the, the weapons and the sensors and everything they get changed and upgraded all the time. That would be, you know, that's that's for a, a, a reason. And but it was great also going through, you know, previous films to see all of the films about their the various um, the, the ways that things were done in the cockpit. You know, however small they are, you know, even if it's just like a second. Sure. Um, it, it matters to the, the filmmakers. You know, it matters to. Um, the, the the production companies involved in it and the, the cast and crew, you know, we all, you know, really care about the, um, uh, the the films and and understand how much everyone, you know, loves adores these these films and it's um, you know clearly it's hard to, to kind of please everyone but if you if you do everything with the best intentions to make the best movie you can um, you can't ask for more for from from all the you know, guys and girls involved in it. Absolutely. Now, having been in the cockpit or the vicinity of an Imperial shuttle, an X-wing, the Falcon, multiple yeah. other aircrafts, uh, spacecrafts. Uh, do you have a favorite? Being a pilot yourself, you're like, I just like how the yoke is here. I like the switches here. Yeah, I mean, I've seen inside the Tie Fighter as well. Like what? Mm, yeah, I can't say too much about that, but that was amazing. Sweet. Um, yeah, <laughs> really, really amazing. Uh, do you know what the AT hauler was cool? Yeah, the AT hauler was cool. It, it it um it it looked and felt the inside of the cockpit. It it, it feels like um some big industrious machine thing. It was really kind of well thought out about how, how it would be used to kind of pick up stuff and shift it around. It's like being in the inside a crane. I can imagine like a really massive crane up underneath, so you can see out underneath. Uh-huh. The, um, the the floor of the panels and you know so I I uh, I, I that that was great um, but oh man the the, the Falcon scene it's hard especially it's with, hard with all the of Falcon. them when they're all in there you know just seeing seeing all of them in the in the cockpit the the Falcon was awesome um, I think no I know what it is. Okay, let's and do it. There was, there was, yeah, there was a scene on Rogue One where it's externally, and um, I have to. So um, there was a scene shot when um, Diego and um, and Felicity are walking out, and I'm running back. I have to run across the pan onto up some, or do a quick walk round of an X wing, mm-hmm. and climb up and 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 get in, and. Um, then they they shut the you know I hit a button and the and the cockpit comes up and I have to like run up and clamber and just jump in where you just have to drop yourself into the seat you know, uh-huh. as quickly as you can and then the uh, the the canopy comes down again over the top and so I was just shut completely in the thing by myself looking out externally the windows seeing all of the guys like running around in the X wing kit and all the ground crew I'm like. I feel like I'm just about to launch, you know, yeah. in the cockpit of an X-wing, and um, yeah, it was like a that that was that was definitely yeah, Man. I'd say uh, cockpit of the, um, the the X-wing has to be has to be your hard Bentley, you know. Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah, totally. That was a trick question. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that is awesome. And uh, can you believe we've been talking for over an hour already? Uh, I, I, I was in the back of my mind. I was wondering how much, if I'm if I'm boring you or any Dude, listeners. Dude, like, but... definitely. It's called the interesting podcast, right? I vet everyone before they okay. come in. <laughs> But yeah, dude, this so was this is the, this is the vetting. This the, this is the vetting. Yeah, the show starts start the now. Right. Okay. <laughs> but welcome dude, everyone. Hi, exactly. Hi. Welcome, Benjamin Hartley. <laughs> Har Benley to you. Uh, yeah, exactly. But dude, this was this was really fun. It finally happened. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I've been really looking forward to obviously um, you know chatting and, and and sharing stuff. But you know, it's great following uh, your your 
very very social media bits and it's um it's great yeah I'm, I'm yeah really glad we finally got the chance to chat yeah ditto ditto so uh where can people find you online uh yes i'm uh benjamin dot hartley on instagram indeed indeed you are i think that's yeah that's um i'm not a great um user of other things what do you call these things channels um (laughs) whatever they're called uh, platforms um so I, i am on i think i'm benji hartley on twitter i believe so that sounds yeah. that sounds right to me yeah I, yes I, it's i don't know where the dots in there but i think i'm benji hartley on twitter um and um benjamin dot hartley on instagram which i i'm trying to use more um my 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 10 year old daughter she obviously probably wants me to use more and can't understand why i'm not using it but um <laughs> yeah that, it's off limits social media is off limits to those kids smart they can smart yes, man yeah. <laughs> but yeah this um, was this was great i had a really really good time and uh if you ever want to come back on it's it's, it's an open door it's an open door here fantastic thank you very much I've, I've super enjoyed it and um yeah just any any time if there's any other questions that, that you've got and if i can try and you know if people want to go onto instagram and and ask messages i'm not sure how that works but yeah i'm sure <laughs> they if, do. Something, <laughs> if something pings up and um uh yeah i'm you know happy to answer comments and and whatever about questions that are star wars well any related but you know about the star wars universe because um you know i I love being a part of it it's not lost on me it's you know if anyone ever thinks see someone like thinks oh man i can't believe they you know that they probably don't appreciate it as much but uh you know the truth is is that you know it's it's not lost on me at all and it's i'm i feel really you know honored to be a part of the um the, the star wars universe so really happy to share anything absolutely and we're happy to have you in it Grand. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. And... My cabbages! Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you enjoyed it, stop by iTunes, give it a five-star rating. It really does help push the show to the front of the algorithm so that more people can find it. Uh, If you'd like to follow me, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff, as Jedi Brian. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. So until next time, be well.